early stages. So we've just had sort of preliminary discussion. Um, the idea is to sort of test them in the community, see if they make sense, if they don't make sense. If we hear good things about them, or at least not bad things about them, it goes back to the planning board. The planning board would vote to introduce in the process. And then we'd have yet another formal public hearing. So this is informal to engage people early in the process. Um, I'm just going to go through these changes quickly because I want most of the time for discussion. And so I'll go through each one. If no one cares about it, I'll go on to the next one if you want discussion and we're, we're spending more time. Um, um, so seven changes again we're talking about. The first, and, and these sort of came from two different sources. One was the city adopted a comprehensive plan called Sustainable Northampton that creates a big vision for where we're trying to get the city to go in a lot of different areas. Lots of public meetings, lots of public hearings, adopted by the planning board, ad hoc committee, city council, a bunch of other people. And that's sort of a big picture blueprint we're trying to move towards. The other thing that affects many of us on all these properties is we're looking at a number of institutional properties that are closing. Clark School is closing a big part of the campus. Smith College is surplusing a portion. At least one old elementary school the city has, and the Catholic Church. And so that's sort of, and all those uses were basically exempt from zoning when they were operating. So frankly, the city never paid a lot of attention to what the zoning was for those places. Now that they're potentially going in private sector hands, the zoning becomes a lot more important. So that, that, that's really where we started from this. Um, but again, we looked at other things as well. So. Um, so this is the first change, Holy Street. So this is, um, this is the, the Roman Catholic Church on Holy Street. It's currently zoned residential. That property is going to go on the market. It's not really a place you expect one, two, and three family homes in the churches. This, this area and this side of Holy Street is already all zoned business, but different business districts. Some of it's zoned neighborhood business, and some of it's zoned office industry. And proposals for all these areas to become central business. Central business is our most permissive zoning district from a business standpoint. So it would allow greater density of development, it would allow greater mixture of uses. Um, that sort of the carrot for development, the stick, if you will, for development is there's some design standards that go with it. So what we say in essence to central business is we like people to build up, we like people to build out, we like more flexibility, we just want the buildings to tell a good story and to provide those things. And so that on all these three exempts five houses in the Nippula. Right, we're, in this area, we were touching only, oh, other than the Catholic Church, yeah. we were rezoning only places that were already zoned business district or institutional. Yeah. And these have been residential for years. It didn't seem like the right time yeah. to deal with this. It also, I don't quite know the history, but for the same reason I'm not messing with it, well, there's one house that's right. here. Maybe we should revisit it someday, but we're trying to go to the low end. You know, and, and what happens, except for the Catholic Church, most of these uses are built out. So we do these changes, doesn't make a dramatic change. You know, that all these businesses are here, but as business lifestyle and life cycle ends and somebody else comes in, you get some reuse from the area. You know, I stopped at the, the Hungry Ghost Bakery on my way here. Um, and it was, it was a central business expansion we did a few years ago. And I think we rezoned it six years before Hungry Ghost expanded. So it's that kind of thing. We don't expect dramatic changes, but we hope to get incremental changes that what is the common current land use? Um, well, so this is the Catholic Church. This is their activities hall, I'm not sure what they call it. Um, there's a parsonage building here which doesn't show up. These are all mixed uses. So this is um, HEC, the Hampshire Educational Collaborative. This is the old lumber yard. It's now the um, gym. Hotel. What's that? The gym. The gym, right. Um, these are offices. I think this is condos in the upper floors, or is that condos in the upper floors? This is what the shoes. Shoe places here, I got the other tenants are. The dog groomer, dog groomers, the small businesses. And I guess I can't frankly remember. Yeah, it's like, is that's that's the, that's the shoe place. Okay. Oh, that's the shoe place, okay. Um, that was the old potato farm. This is a parking lot that goes to the Catholic Church. Park. So obviously, from a zoning change, you'd expect this one's the easiest to redo, the parking lot. And then the Catholic Church, we'll see what happens. I mean, clearly, are willing to sell the church for somebody who wants it. I'm not sure if they're willing to sell this yet, but still trying to figure out their options. Well, the parking lot belongs to the church. The parking lot belongs to the church, right? You don't show the tail wagon. They could develop it tomorrow, uh, the current zoning or new zoning. I assume they'd want to figure out what the overall use is before they do it. Yes. So the the houses, the residential pieces on the um, along there. Yeah. Those could be um, uh, part of the central. So uh, for now, we're very permissive. 
I'm sorry? So for now, we wouldn't change this. So we wouldn't change this. Right, we'd only be changing the areas already zoned business or the Catholic Church property. Because the balance we always get is, as a general rule where our plans are leading us, is we want to have expansion of downtown, allow more businesses, allow more vibrancy. But we also want to keep a lot of housing close to downtown so people can walk downtown and spend money. So that's the balance again. We didn't really want to lose the housing here, create a nice buffer for the neighborhood. But where it's already business, giving more flexibility. And none of those housing units are suitable, one supposes, for business. Without, well, well, you can always get a doctor's that's office or a lawyer's office, but for the most part, that's true. You know, um, you know, think about downtown on, on Center Street and State Street, where some of those houses are redone. There's some uses, but not a big office. Any questions on this? Comments on this? Sid, one more comment yeah. about this. So if someone uh, wanted to knock down one of those houses, residential, and put up a commercial uh, business, so to speak, building, they could do that because it's central business? Well, in, the, in this area that's white, yes. But, but again, the only house in this area that's white is the parsonage that's right over here. So these are out, would be out of the central business district. So the central business that's proposed is within this red area. And the only house that's there is the parsonage for the, for the Catholic Well, there's houses along, um, say, across the street from Ed's. Right, but those are not included within this area. Oh, I see. So we're only talking about within this red, and so there's no houses oh, I there. Now, URC, which this is, is a district that allows mixed use. So it doesn't mean this area already allows um, residential and some limited commercial. Um, so you know, something, you know, State Street and Fruit Street and Con Street um, are or, or at URC. If you go down those areas, you'll see some business. Yes. Um, the zoning changes, but much that area is mixed use. So, how many structures do you, in here do you already think have the character of central business? I know there's a few. I, I think this one and the Catholic Church are the only two that really do right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone asked us before about environmental issues. There is a major storm sewer, massive storm sewer. It goes from the D.A. Sullivan School yes. all the way down here, D.A. Sullivan off, you know, off. So you couldn't totally rebuild these sites anyway. But, you know, I think that's the only, that's, that's the only really masonry structures that feel like that. So if somebody did knock down, <clears throat> say, the shoe store, do you think it would be possible to build a three-story building there? Yeah. yeah. Even with the, we were talking about the, the yeah, remember if you wouldn't get a special permit from the planning board for a greater setback, it may well be that somebody would have to come to the planning board for some sort of... Okay, so it wouldn't be able to front up the street necessarily. Well, you know, it's all a matter of money. You can build on top of a sewer line, but it just becomes... You know, any big city in the country, people build on top of sewer lines all the time. Mm -hmm. Much more expensive to harden it so that you, you don't worry about it collapsing. Right. Um, if you were building, you know, if you assemble all these properties and wanted a huge building, yes. If you were doing something the same size, you know, So if someone were to do that, as that gentleman was speaking to, the residential pieces on this side, I'm looking on the uh, side, say, Eastern Avenue, yep. the, right there, those yep. houses all along that road through there, going down Holly, could be affected by um, a three, four, four uh, yeah. floor yeah. structure. Yeah. Yes. I mean, our experience as okay. we've done this elsewhere in downtown, mm -hmm. Is this not a huge? I mean, we, I talked about this in the earlier meeting. We we're trying to think about all the buildings that have been redone in, in yes. recent years. You know, the old Wally Soda Bar was one story, went yes. to two. The new Holy Block uh, or Strong Block went to three stories. The uh, Futon Place that expanded went to three stories. So we don't. I don't think there's a big demand for people building the max on the 65 feet is allowed in central business. I don't see that sort of demand there. I see the three stories, but yeah, certainly someone could do three stories. So you have that connector strip. Yeah. What, what's the thinking there? I mean, because this. Yeah. The, yeah. We have a saving residential building. Close well, no, there. but to the back there, that would be central. So somebody could build oh, something back so there. So this is mostly about. Keep, yeah, that's the old lumber yard. It's most about keep following the property boundaries. So what would you envision going there? Well, as a practical matter, probably parking to go with the buildings along the street. Okay. So probably something wouldn't get built there. Right. I don't think so. But it'd be a great place for parking. Right. You know, years ago, I don't think this is going to happen anywhere, but before the tunnel bar was done, yeah. we actually explored, we did a downtown plan, which goes back to 1994, 
we explored could we go through what became the tunnel bar and pop out over here with the tunnel and then suddenly in essence shorten the walking distance from this neighborhood to downtown. And with Amtrak coming back, obviously that's appealing, but I think the tunnel bar makes too much money for that property to be available. And so if I look at this map correctly, the line on the left is basically the railroad right. That's right. This is the center line, so as a practical matter, that's just symbolic that we follow the center lines. Jim's right, this area is, I think they're using it for parking now, could yeah. be used for parking. There's some big embankment there on both that's sides right. as well. That's right. And the bottom embankment is basically this line right yeah. here. It doesn't exactly follow yeah, this. Right, so there's not as much space. Right. Okay. Right. We, we do that in Santa I'm sorry, I should have explained that. Zoning lines always follow lines where there's the least amount of controversy exactly where it is. So we tend to follow center lines of streets, property boundaries, center lines of railroads. So some of the lines are just makes it easier to figure out. Questions, comments, concerns? And why not that bottom house there? A again, the rule we started with was, except for the church, which is already institutional, we were just go starting with business districts. So it may well make sense. We sort of figured we're not ready for This may well make sense, too. We just weren't ready for that discussion. That's a much, you know, changing over residential neighborhoods is a much more complicated issue. It makes sense at some points but we want to be really careful about doing it. And, and, you know, having it residential on one side and commercial on the other side is even harder. Obviously, we do that here, we already have that. So where we have them across the street is sort of existing conditions anyway. Well, I actually think the reality with that sewer line, yeah, is they're going to build more like heck, because I think heck is built away from right. where the sewer That's exactly line is. So that the setbacks of whatever gets built there are actually going to be away from the right, right. Okay. All right, so second one, um, country. country is a little more complicated. I said we're very careful about not converting residential properties to, to business districts. But country, we are actually proposing doing some residential properties. The issue here is Street is a really interesting mix. It's a business district, a business district, business use, senior center, which is sort of institutional use, a business district here. So it keeps switching almost every property. And I think even within these other ones, there may be a couple of uses that are, are businesses. And so the suggestion is making this all central business architecture. Let's try to explore that. Central business is central business architecture. Same, same sort of idea as Con Street. It would allow some commercial properties to convert, which some we always look very carefully at. But it would create, you know, this is a corner a lot of people walk. We're trying to make it friendlier to get to the senior center. Um, and so create some opportunities. One of the challenges we've had downtown for, I don't know, a decade now, more than that, is businesses that used to be located in upper stories downtown are moving away from downtown because they don't want to be in buildings you have to walk up and they want to get to drive there easily. And we hate losing them from the city. So I, the example I always give is downtown crossing in Hadley. If you go look at that, a lot of those businesses used to be downtown Northampton. And they left downtown Northampton because they wanted an easier place to park. This is an opportunity to grab some of those businesses that can't be downtown but want to be close by. Um, you know, Paradise Copies is certainly an example. Paradise Copies didn't think it worked downtown in easy parking. They stayed close by, which is great. But we don't want to lose those other businesses. So it gives some opportunity. For them. At the meeting we had before, this was the only one that was controversial. But there were three people who expressed concerns about it. So it's one thing we have to revisit. And, and they expressed concerns the same thing I'm saying about having residential properties. What about the, uh, why the senior center? Why would that be? Well, again, do we really want the senior, is the message the senior? The zoning is mostly, in some ways, symbolic. The senior center isn't going anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. But the zoning says that what we believe in our hearts is that this area should be multifamily housing. And I'm not sure that's what we said. In a big study committee process, we said, what a great place for institutional use. The zoning should reflect. And what about, sorry, that Murphy Millers, and why are they still in green? Are they perfect? Uh, they're this one, right? Well, I thought those next one over. Yeah, I think they're this. This is World War II Club. Are they right next to World War II Club? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought, it was, I thought that was World War II Club. Yeah, that's right. We can see the roundhouse on there, right? <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and why not Salvo and also the Gazette? Well, or just keep going? Yeah, yeah. I, I think mostly because we're incrementalists and it involves other issues we need to look at in more detail. We need to look at the lower part of Pleasant Street that's general business. We need to look at all service center. We need to look at all of Con Street. So, so next we may come back around like this. Right. Right, right, right. 
We just weren't ready for that because that's a big piece to, to bite off. Um, although Salvo, I don't I mean, Salvo's residential. I don't think we want to change that. But you have the same issue here. Neighbor business, general business, uh, office industrial. So yes, we should be looking at that. It just takes more time. Because that is general business already, but right. it may make sense to... I get TV. There's a design underway, you know, it's going to be a decade before it gets implemented, looking at the possibility of a roundabout intersection of Collins and Pleasant. And one of the reasons, I mean, it's for traffic reasons being a roundabout, but one of the reasons it makes us think about this is symbolically you could imagine downtown someday being up to the roundabout. That, that creates a different sense of place. <laughs> Our grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, well, that's why we're not rushing to do this. But I mean downtown, but to be clear, I don't, I don't mean downtown in the sense that Main Street's downtown. I mean downtown in the sense of a lot of commercial and that where you might choose many of your trips to be on foot. I mean, example I give is if I'm going from my office, which is sort of right here, to the Gazette, I wouldn't think about walking. It seems really far. But if I'm going to the equivalent place on Bridge Street, post office, I would certainly walk to the post office every time. And yet my guess is the post office is probably identical in length to what the, So just there's this perception. And so I mean downtown enough to have the perception that I want to walk. Not this, you know, four-story buildings. So one of my concerns is what happens if the existing residential properties on the fruit streets out of town. Yeah. Will there be additional pressure on people to make them available for commercial use? I don't think that's an issue. I don't think so. I don't think it's a good place to expand. I think there's a separate issue which I can see being concerned about, which is, again, we think this stuff grows incredibly slow. We've done a lot of properties since 1994, and you get, you know, one a decade. But in theory, someone could be building a 65-foot tall building here. I think that's the bigger effect of Curry Street, is suddenly you have a 65-foot building. Here. Well, it's also the, <clears throat> the buffer between the back of the central business and the back of the house. Yeah. Isn't there a 30 foot buffer? Yeah. Is there a room? I mean, there's nice the structures right on the border. On some of the, the, the garages. Right, but so if somebody came in and, and wanted to knock down one of those structures. That's the same thing we have right now. So we're not talking about the buffer, but the same we have right now. So that's a challenge for any of those reuses. Right, but for the reuses, that's why it's so right, right. now. Uh, so, so many people would, I mean, plan work to reduce it to 20 feet with special permit. So, I'm sure people would ask for that, and many uses, I'm sure, would be going the zoning board grandfather group, taking advantage of the grandfather group. Right. But yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenging time. That's why I don't think you would grandfather one of the buildings on the site? So some of those buildings, some of those sites have two buildings. Yeah. They're garages. So the garage, so I can build the front and leave the garage? Yeah, right. This counter from my office knows the details when I get Um. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so we can knock down the front building and leave the back of there. Yeah. Yes, although remember, it needs to go through site plan approval, so the planning board has a lot of discretion. I mean, in theory, yes. The planning board have to agree to But if that second structure is right above the property line, right? There's no room to put a buffer in. But that's the reason I say, in theory, you a 65 foot building. But practically, I think this is more like when we expanded the west side of State Street, which used to be URC and is now central business, and we expanded Market Street. We don't get, there's lots like this area, are very small and very narrow. And so what you get is, you get some conversion, you get some expansion of business, but not that sort of massive expansion. You know, you can imagine over here, someone building a big office building, so the demand was there. I can't imagine that a lot's being big enough, although I hope there's investment or something. We're not doing this for no reason. I would love it if, you know, Paradise Copies wanted for the second floor in the building, the building supported the second floor, that the zoning would encourage that from happening. Those are the sort of incremental things that I think are realistic. Comments this way. Right. And again, I'll go through them all. You can always come back to them at, you know, at any point. So. Um, so this is Damon Road and River Road. This is mostly about being truth in advertising. Um, and this process, I have to say, began well before Drossel's Funeral Home gave up their license. So that was just you know, good anticipation on our part, not that we knew what was happening. But Drossel's currently is zoned general industrial. We don't expect Drossel's or anybody else to put manufacturing on the site. And it's not an appropriate place for manufacturing. So the, the suggestion is to, to rezone that property in general business, which matches all the properties around it, um, and makes sense, you know, sort of fits in with this area and allows that sort of intense business use that we want here. And then River Run of Condos, this again is mostly symbolic. It's been zoned general industrial for years, for decades. Um, River Run, I don't think, is planning to tear themselves down at any point and become a factory. 
Um, and so it makes sense to rezone it to a residential district that reflects the use that's there and that we anticipate being the use that continues to be there. Any questions or comments? Cut it, River I think it was my variance, but I have to go through it well before my time. Oh, so it's that old. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was old. I got here 22 years ago. It was old when I got here. Oh. I don't know the history. But. And the special conservancy? So this is a tiny, tiny sliver. This is most about having better maps. Um, any place that's floodplain. Oh, your, your, your figure said silver. All the silver. I thought the, the, the gray was the silver. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. Okay, so next one on the list, this is West Farms. So this is the Ward 6, the western part of the city. This is Jim's Variety Store, if any of you go out there. Um, and this is sort of a remnant of the past. That we used to have lots of little mom-and-pop grocery stores. Those things tend not to survive these days, and so our experience is those stores need to grow and have opportunities to be bigger, or they're gonna collapse. And the time I've been here, we've had a few of these the small ones closed down. And so this would allow these three properties are zoned commercial. They're all zoned neighborhood business right now. Reason them from neighborhood business to general business, which would give more opportunities for redevelopment. So, for example, this property, particular Jim's Variety, has talked about could they have a pizzeria there if they wanted. The answer is no, you couldn't under the current zoning. Yes, you could have rezoned. I, I think there's a city interest in keeping a small commercial area here to this whole Ward 6 area. It doesn't have to drive to Florence or downtown or East Hampton. So that's basically what this is about. And then at the same time, we're correcting lines. So this is actually a residential district that zones neighborhood businesses to rezone that to be residential to manage this residence. They can't. That's why. It's, so this, these lots were, there's an 80,000 square foot minimum lot size. These lots were part of a very weirdly shaped lot to get up to 80,000 square feet. So you couldn't go in anyway. And the hills were this, between. Here and here goes up 30 feet, 40 feet. Okay. All right. So um, this is Leeds. This is where we thought we'd get lots of people. But um, so this is the Catholic Church in Leeds. It's been closed for a number of years. That's the parsonage, which I think is still being used. That's the place that rumps, uh, that rents and services dumpsters here. Um, the Catholic Church is all zoned urban residential B, which is a, a residential district. It basically says we'd like it to be one and two family homes. The, the dumpster place is zoned office industrial, which allows what they're doing there. Two potential benefits for this. One is, you know, allowing more potential reuse for the Catholic Church um, in this area. Florence always sort of wanted more, I mean, uh, Lee's always wanted more of a defined center. Um, they're not going to get retail as a practical matter because now this is not the demand for it. But they might get some sort of other use. Um, we had a meeting with Lee Civic a couple of years ago, and at the time was interested in someone having a uh, fencing studio. That's the sort of thing you can imagine. You can do that. Um, office industrial, the issue for this property is there's been some concern with the neighborhood about sort of the industrial feel of this property in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Um, and this is sort of the carrot approach. It says the use is allowed to be grandfathered forever. They can stay there forever. But if they ever wanted to sell, they potentially could sell it to a higher rent paying use. And so that might encourage a, a, a reuse that the neighborhood might like. And what was the contract? Did, you, did everybody come to the previous I thought they'd come here. Any questions on this? Yeah, sure. oh, yeah, where is this? That, this is Main Street. Where's this the bike paths? So the bike path's right here. Oh, okay. This rezoning is just symbolic, so we not split district, but so the bike path goes right through here. And so the, the river's mill right building is up to the north side of the... Right, the one that's housing is sort of right off the okay. map. Right. This is the little mm -hmm. monument to the, the flood. Okay. And well, that church has been on the market for... At, at much too much money, it's not... I mean, all of the other churches have these nice masonry structures. This is a wood frame structure that's not in great shape. Um, and a lot worse shape now than it was when the church closed over the years. So, to the north is... It looks like what used to be business-type buildings right by that... Right, so there's a couple of homes, there's a lot the city owns, then across Mulberry Street is what everyone calls the awning shop, because there used to be an awning mm -hmm. shop there. And that's actually, that's the zone business now, like okay. it's zone business for years. Is there still a post office there? On the other side of the river, so the post office is sort of a, at the end of me. And there's a small, um, <clears throat> I'm just asking about the subdivisions for, uh, like, uh, the, the 
what is between the existing buildings? So, what is intended? Can there, can there be at some point new construction, or just make this mostly um, meant for reuse? No, absolutely, it could be new construction. Um, and in particular here, I mean, you know, four years ago I thought the Catholic Church might get reused. These days I think it's more likely it's going to come down at some point, unless they do something soon. But yeah, so either one, someone could reuse the building. Um, there's often an incentive to reuse the building if you want grandfathering, if you want more flexibility, but it's never part. In, in general business, there's no minimum lot size, so you could subdivide that parcel to create two new lots that have separate right. use. Yeah. You could have multiple buildings, you could have one solid building. Exactly. So that you could. Um, I, again, the problem with new construction is unless you get retail to pay the rent, it's hard to make a big building here, you know, make a building pay or something. The, the downside of GB is it doesn't allow residential on the first floor of a building. Again, an old building's grandfather's the parsonage would say. But if someone tore down the side and wanted to reconstruction, they could have residential but if we above the first floor. They try and try and create some kind of um, so then this is the old Florence Grammar School. This is the Florence Mini Mall. So uh, Pine Street in Florence, the Mill River is right over here. Um, so what was Florence Grammar until 15 years ago, maybe? It's the Florence Community Center right now. Um, it's zoned residential. So again, sort of the implied message is we think this building should be one or two family homes. We do allow a community center, which is what, it, what this is allowed for now, which allows public uses and nonprofit uses of these sorts of buildings. But there's a limit to how much space can be nonprofit, and there's a prohibition on commercial space. So, if to make the numbers work here, it made sense to allow it to be some percentage of office space for it. That wouldn't be allowed. But if, you, if it changes from URB to office industrial, then you can't have residents in office industrial. So, the second floor, they want to turn the condos? Second floor it doesn't allow uh, residential except for live work space. <coughs> I mean, Oh, so live workspace is allowed if you're doing artist law. Mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, it's not. But URB wouldn't allow that. I mean, this wouldn't meet a URB requirement anyway because it's, URB is one of two family homes. So, you, oh, okay, so you couldn't convert any of the, the space there to condos right now. Any I mean, you could convert commercial condos, right. but you couldn't convert. Well, I'm thinking of uh, the other T.A. Sullivan. So there's no condos T.A. Sullivan building next to the old Hollywood Brick. Right. Or Holly Middle School rooms. Right. Right. They're both in condos, some are residential. Some oh, do you, do you sell the condos? Yeah. It was all the building to the left of the elevators yeah. is always condos and there's condos here. But that's a commercial zone, so that would allow that, and residential wouldn't allow that because it doesn't allow multi family. But GB would uh, allow live work. Oh, why? Oh, office industrial would allow live work. Right. Right. We're but not sorry, suggesting it to GB. Right. You could do it to GB, which would allow condos, but no one's really pushing for condos, for residential condos here anyway. Um, and GB also allows retail. Right? I'm sorry about putting retail. Is the Florence Grammar uh, fully rented? Really? I don't know the answer. The well, that's one of the issues is they can't find enough nonprofits to fill up the space. They have other people who want the space, right. but they're not allowed by zoning. Because so, only nonprofits are allowed to be RB. Well, in under this community center definition, right. you could have, yeah, and there's this plenty more permit that dates back when it first closed that said, here are the classifications of uses allowed. And so, because it was zoned as a residential, in a residential district, so this would allow um, a broader range of uses that could come in and sort of allow low rent incubator kind of business. Right, so I know they rented, what they rented for is fairly low. Yeah. And so whether, I mean, school department I know for years has talked about do we want to keep it, do we want to sell the building? The zoning change makes sense, Frank, then they're either scenario. Is the school, is the school department okay with that change? We had a discussion with them recently, and they're not operating this building now. They're, they're, it's basically being self operated The school department owns it, it's on their books, but they're not, I mean, you would know better than I would. Well, when, the school department, when I was in the school committee, we actually had uh, uh, the alternative oh, right. high school was there. Moved out there right? uh, it's moved out, so I don't know. At the, at the time, I think the school department was managing it. Jonas Turk was. Uh, okay. Yeah, we but, did have a conversation, actually, for not. Before the proposal to zoning, but Susan Wright, before she moved over to the city side, yeah. um, it, it was in the context of the fact that they couldn't rent to some of the places that they right. wanted to rent to and they wanted a zoning. Yeah, I just change. wanted to manage the building as well. There must be somebody. Well, Susan Wright had been sort of in charge of that. Well, it's because she took over Joe, so yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, God, those neighborhoods. 
Um, so, and then this is the Florence Mini Mall, sort of same discussion before, neighborhood business is much more restricted than general business. So, you know, there's a restaurant there, for example, much more cumbersome to have a re new restaurant there than it's two. Was that? It's two. Right? But it's basically turned over so that the use of the grandfather goes from one to the other. And general business, again, if they were ripping down the building and start over again, it would have to be up to the street with the parking behind it, the, the, the building's grandfather. But it would allow a greater range of mixes and if they ever want to redevelop it. So, so, the gray area down the hill here. Yeah. What, what are those zones? So this is office industrial here. Uh -huh. um, this is office industrial. This I think is still general industrial. And what about uh, the arts and industry? Building? I think it's office industrial. So it would all be kind of consistent. Well, this one's GI, which mm -hmm. is the heavier use. Right. right. And it doesn't allow. You can't live in the studios that the arts and industry. You can't take it enough. Oh studio. really? Well, but from a component <laughs> issue. But it's true. Zoning would allow. Oh, well, zoning. No, zoning, zoning would allow. Oh, it's zoning would not. No, because it's office, office industrial and live working. You couldn't have a condo that's all residential. But it's a live workspace that would be allowed under zoning. But that building needed fifty million dollars in code changes to make it happen. So practically, it's happening. But zoning's not going to stop. Because we rezoned. Remember we rezoned? Oh, that was from SI to GI. One of the buildings yeah. down there off of Donington Street. Just this one last year. Right, because they wanted to allow the workspace. Yeah. That was initially from, from SI to GI, right? Yeah, they no, went from GI that. to SI and then SI to OI. Oh, okay. Yeah. So originally they wanted to live workspace, like now they're finding, they can find enough tenants for that. Okay. So then the last one is the map change. This is sort of the, the, the catch all. A lot of these institutional properties that are closing aren't next to another business district, so there's not really an opportunity to rezone them. And when you have a factory building that closes, it's grandfather. You can change, you can go to the zoning board, go from one non-conforming use to another. But if you have a use that's allowed anywhere in the Commonwealth, like educational uses or religious uses, because they're allowed by right, there's no grandfather when those uses are no longer there. So a Catholic church can be built tomorrow in any neighborhood in the Commonwealth, or any district. Or an elementary school can be built. But that means that if it closes the day after tomorrow, it is no grandfather, you're stuck with this building. So this is a chance to say we're trying to preserve some of these old buildings, so just the historic buildings. We're trying to preserve these old buildings with an incentive, which is we're giving more flexibility in the uses than you'd have otherwise. Um, and a cost, which is we want you to preserve the building, we want you to historic preservation. So we've been talking this most about Clark School, because that's the furthest along it is, which might say, well, think of these old dorms in Clark School. In a URC district, which is now, which is really hard to use, uh, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 square foot dormitory. If instead this was an effect, then Clark or the developer could say, I'm willing to put a historic preservation restriction on the building, which will preserve it you know, forever. And in return for that, I could do multifamily homes, or I could do offices or not medical goods, too high volume. I could have a lot more flexibility for how to use them. Who makes the designation that it's historic? <clears throat> so we have to define it here. So this is sort of the big picture. That's one thing we have to work on. Um, you know, traditionally historic has been 50 years. It's, it's my own values, I know, but so much slot was built in the 50s that I tend to think of sort of being pre-World War II. Being <clears throat> um, so there's the detail. I sort of want to deal with this level and we have to work on it. I know, you know people, we've talked to the most and tested the most about the Clark, Clark School neighborhood and Clark School and both like it concept. You know, several details we can <clears throat> We're about to go with a little land off South Street to align this way, estate. Well, it would certainly apply to Lyman Estate itself. The building. To the building. It wouldn't apply to the rest of the land. Lyman Estate fits in the category of that's another thing we should rezone. I, we were trying to do stuff that was fairly easy and we could move quickly on, and that just involves a really long involved What do you mean, your kids retired? Yeah, I'm just move some things along. That's okay. Right. So, Lyman Estate, Con Street, Service Center, lots of other things. Just but ultimately, the library needs to be resolved. Thoughts? That's all I have. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So, in terms of having, uh, I'm thinking of Pleasant Street and Con Street. Uh -huh. In terms of having that. Uh, Having central business kind of loop around, so what you were proposing yep. here. 
How much th would that help us towards How are you? making a case to the state to get the roundabout vote? Is there a way to tie it all together point, that it becomes a... Yeah, the roundabout is moving forward. And uh, okay. the, the first step is called a functional design report. Right. And the functional design report has to look at, are you just doing real lines? Are you doing intersection? And are you doing roundabout? And the city has said that our preferred role is roundabout. And Matt's the idea said it's not that. So this point looks like it's going to be around now. All, all this funding for now is going to look like it takes the queue for funding, so I wouldn't give it today. Oh, so, so when you were saying years, it's not, the fact that everybody's agreed that that would be the right solution, what takes years is getting the queue. Right. The issue for the timing is we began our process they need to be managed to allow on street parking. Right. It, the cost to us for sale, by the way, but the benefits we go out on street parking. Right. Right. I don't know. And then the SDOT came back and said, have a uh, service center. And they said, great, we can build a park with a river crossing. Mm -hmm. And then they came back to us and said, how long cost for And we said, it still makes sense. There are still cons. We go down cons and help us. We have some logical play policies. But the problem is, usually, what we own the road, we have to pay for the design. So we said, we have to finish the road after we have to design. Because then we have the kids. It's federal funding for building this, but it's not usually federal funding for all of them. So that's what it is at the time. Mass Highway does this time. Yeah, it's all for everyone. It's all getting the queue for funding. And isn't there also, because we run into issues. This is my concern. Well, I mean, it's a first step into the issue. So there are a lot of benefits. I mean, everything but the cost makes sense for us to take a road. It might be hard to be So with the design almost done, right, that would be pretty soon we'll be able to take that road. Yes. It'd be interesting discussion. Second semester. We still want to design well. Mass Highway's normal rule. And so I think on maybe they just sort of look at it. clear time periods in the money for construction. Right. And that's their own rule. They could break their own rule. And then you go to them and give us the rest. So that's that is an interesting question. In process, okay. and but it's still federal dollars in terms of construction. It's not even state money. 80% federal, 20% state. Or maybe everybody has 80, 20, or 10. Yeah. Um, but the issue is it's still a limited. A bunch of money comes to the region. For us, that's for $2 million for Hampshire. And so it doesn't go somewhere. So it's not like competitive grants. Yeah. So we should, it's better for us to have things in the queue. Where you go? That's what we're so successful on the bike paths. Because our guys are ready, everyone knows.